This video shows a few of the many ways that graphs can be made to be misleading, either intentionally or unintentionally. Most of the examples come from the website callingbullshit.org. Take a look at this bar graph, showing the average number of weekly hours worked for a variety of European countries. What might be misleading about it? Doesn't it give the impression at first glance that people in France have way less hours of work each week than people in Romania, like on the order of maybe a third as much? Until you see the numbers and realize it's maybe just 10% less. With a bar graph, our eyes tend to read the length of the bar as proportional to the quantity represented. And that's not the case in this graph because the axis starts at 36 instead of at zero. This issue is sometimes called axis truncation. So we'd get a much better visual impression of the relative sizes of the work week in the countries if we redid this graph to start at zero. And the next slide does that. Here, the x-axis is starting at zero, and so the length of the bar really is proportional to the number of hours worked each week. And we can see that, while it's still better to be a worker in France than in Romania, the difference is not quite so striking. On this slide, we have a line graph showing the average annual global temperature in Fahrenheit from 1880 through 2015. Why might this representation not be the best way to show this information? In this case, the scale on the y-axis is so big compared to the scale of the data represented that it's very hard to see the trend, let alone any fluctuations within that trend. We might call this issue inappropriate access range. So it would be better to use a y-axis that better fit the data, as we do on the next slide. Here we can get a sense for the trend and the deviation from year to year. So right now you're probably asking, why is it okay to have a y-axis that starts at 55 and not zero in this example, when we didn't like it in the previous example? The main reason is that this is a line graph and not a bar graph. In a line graph, we're not as tempted to read the height of the line as proportional to the number being represented. So we're less likely to misread this difference as a factor of two and more likely to see it as a difference of about one and a half degrees. Another factor is that zero is not really a natural starting place for temperature, zero degrees Fahrenheit. That's kind of an arbitrary amount, unlike the zero hours per week worked, where zero is a meaningful starting place. So making the axis scale appropriately for the data at hand is a remedy to the axis range issue of the previous graph. In this graph, I'm not seeing quite enough information to understand what these bubbles represent, but there is enough information to see that there's something misleading. The numbers in each bubble for each age category don't match our visual impression of the size of the bubbles. For example, if we compare these two bubbles, marked 20% and 30%, the visual impression of the size of the bubbles is not in a two-thirds ratio, right? This does not look like it has the two-thirds of the size of this bubble. Our eyes tend to look at size in terms of area, right, when we're shown colored in discs like this. And in fact, the two-thirds, I believe, is the ratio of the radii. Since area scales as the square of radii, if this ratio of, of radii is two-thirds, then the ratio of area should be two-thirds squared, or four-ninths. So this area is actually less than half of this area. That's about what it looks visually, but that's very misleading since the numbers are not that different. So the flaw on this graph is a misleading use of area. Although I don't have a corrected graph to show you, it would much be much better to make the size of these bubbles the area proportional to the, to the percents rather than the radii. Or alternatively, we don't have to use bubbles at all, and we could just use a bar graph. Finally, what do you think about this graph? It shows the divorce rate in Maine as this line in red, and per capita consumption of margarine, um, it doesn't say whether it's in, it's in Maine or somewhere else, but let's assume it's in Maine, in this black graph. The, the lines certainly track with each other, but putting them together on the same chart seems to imply there might be a causal relationship, and it's bizarre to think that there would be. In fact, if you look a little closer, the scales on the y-axis have nothing to do with each other. Putting two graphs together with different scales 
can be a red flag for some funny business trying to show a relationship where there is not. In this video, we saw a few ways to make misleading graphs. We saw that access truncation for a bar graph can mislead the viewer into seeing more change than there really is. Inappropriate choice of access range can hide a trend that might be of interest. Graphs that use area or volume to represent quantity need that area or volume to be proportional to the quantity represented. Otherwise, this is a misuse or misleading use of area and volume. There are many other ways that graphs can be misleading. Please be a critical reader.